Okay, and we are recording. And I'd like to welcome everyone today. Thank you for joining us for another uh, show, episode, program, however you want to, however you want to call it. So let's go ahead and take a moment to take a nice, deep, centering breath as we welcome ourselves into this sacred space. So welcome, welcome. And as usual, I always like to pull a card. And for the last couple of shows that I've done, I've been stuck on my uh, four agreements deck. And that's what we're going to pull today. This is the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I'll go ahead and shuffle the deck and pull a card for us. Give us a nice word to... Uh, center our show on today and let's see what's the card always do your best surrender and let go of the past there we go whatever life whatever life takes away from you let it go when you surrender and let go of the past you allow yourself to be fully alive in the moment letting go of the past means that you can enjoy the dream that is happening right now. And so our dream that is happening right now, I have the pleasure to have a wonderful conversation today with Reverend Lynn Williams. Uh, Reverend Lynn is a graduate of University of Metaphysics, where I am currently a student the University of Metaphysics, and I thought it would be really cool to invite Lynn on today and have a conversation about her spiritual life, her spiritual journey, um, how she became acquainted with Dr. Masters and uh, University of Metaphysics and University of Sedona, and all the wonderful things that she does for a community. So welcome, Reverend Lynn. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Tamu, for asking me. It was quite an honor and a surprise. Um, <laughs> we met through the International Metaphysic Metaphysical Ministry Group, which is the, um, the branch of the University for Graduates, for Alumni and, and Ministers. And uh, I've been team leader, Facebook group advisor uh, for that branch of the University for I guess since I guess it's what eight, oh almost eight years, um, we got together quite informally. Uh huh. Um, in fact, I wasn't the founder of the group. It was another lady who is still with us, but she wanted to. She needed to focus on her career. She's a teacher. She had some books coming out, programs for her kids. So she asked me one day. I had been helping her admin the group, and she asked me one day if I would like to take it over because she wanted to step back. Uh -huh. And you do an amazing job, by the way. Oh, and I really, because you know, I'll just have to say one of the things when you're not able, you know, all many, a great many universities have distance learning programs, you know, and some of them in their distance learning programs, you're completely on your own. And you, you know, you check in with the professor here and there, or sometimes you get on camera and you have a live classroom. And with ours is, you know, you, you, you study at your own pace, you check in when you want to. And it's really nice to have this web presence that you are doing such an amazing job spearheading because you really feel connected to the other students as well as to the administration. And so I'd really like to thank you for all the hard work that you do in that, because I know it's not easy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, and you're right, it's not easy, and it has been getting more challenging as time goes on, but then mm -hmm. so has everything else we're facing. And um, it's kind of a perfect timing or perfect storm of things coming together at this point in time because of just what you said the university is trying now to go one step further actually mm -hmm. catching up to mm -hmm. technology because our university is over 50 years old yeah. um i've been with it since before its inception actually um, right. 
Well, I wouldn't say before its inception because Dr. Masters was doing a lot of work in an uh, organization called the National, National Metaphysical Institute. Right, which, right. Uh, I met him back in, oh gosh, well, 40 years, over 40 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it was, in, it was in 77, I believe. Um, and then it was just a building. He was on the second floor of a building in Los Angeles. Um, and he had turned the entire second floor into his church, his, um, his offices, as well as the, the study, the, uh, the, the school. Okay, okay. And so when I was, uh, when I first started, we were studying live with him, you know, okay. we would come right. in with our study guides, the same basic material, but okay. we would get a week, we would come in, we would have a week for each one of the modules and we would read it ahead of time and, and study on it, what have you. And then we would come in and he would lecture on it. We'd ask questions, we'd share, and a lot of things were happening. Now, um, what, one of the things that we've been doing, and the university is also moving in that direction, is to move back to some, his, some of his original intention. Mm -hmm. And this all weaves into my story, so I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. But that was when I first met him. At, <laughs> ironically, I was trying to lose weight. Now, this is back in the 70s. Yeah, <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, and I was really, I had had my daughter. She was very young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a few months old, no, three years old, I'm sorry. Um, but I had not been able to get rid of the weight. So I was really frustrated with it. And I picked up what was then a new magazine called The New Woman. And I remember that magazine. Remember, well, it's still around, but then it was new and it was the hottest thing. And all right, the young right. women were just eating it up because they were the first to come out with this image of the quote unquote new woman, you know, we had no idea that they were on the cutting edge of what has become this huge movement now, but thank God they were, because I don't know if that breadcrumb, that spirit was lying in front of me could have made that connection at that point in time, if I hadn't wanted to lose weight, because this magazine um, presented an art article called, I think it was called Think Yourself Thin. Okay. Um, and it caught my attention and I'm like, what do you mean? You know, but it caught my attention enough for me to look at the article. So I read it and it was written by a metaphysician by the name of Novell. Um, I had no idea who he was or what, but anyway, the, the, in the credits where his name was, it said something about metaphysics. So I went ahead and started doing his little program, which basically involved some affirmations that you repeat three times a day, some meditation for 20 minutes, and some visioning. Um, but he didn't present it in those terms. He just said, this is what you do, and do it every day, and your body will begin to make changes. Well, within a week, I was beginning to see changes or whatever, and I'm glad that this is all coming up again, because as my life has unfolded, and I always, in my coaching and, and ministering and mentoring, talk about the layers. The weight problem has been one that I have been challenged with over and over and over and still <laughs> for various reasons. I'm up and down and, you know, and always in a good state of health and always still looking good. But I was always, I always carry like 20, 25 pounds. Okay. That was, that's my margin. So now as what's happening with me, which I'll get into in a minute, it's about the dealing with those deep-seated issues that are really part of why I started this journey 40 years ago. Okay. But when I did, um, it started to change my life. Now, what Dr. Masters did, I actually got on the, on the, in the, what we call the phone book. I don't know if many of you know what that is, but you <laughs> On the internet, you had to go to this big old book that was probably four or five inches thick that contained everybody's phone number that had a phone number, unless it was unlisted. But everybody's phone number and businesses were in this book. And so I looked up metaphysics. And that's how I found the National Metaphysics Institute. Oh. I called him up. The lady, uh, Dr. Master's assistant, her name was LaVon, and I asked her, I said, What's, I read this article. It says you can think yourself thin. Is that real? And she said, absolutely. And she had me at that word. So I said, <laughs> And she said, yes, you can do it. And by the way, your timing is perfect uh -huh. because Dr. Masters is starting, he's doing a preview introduction to his 
Meditation Dynamics Program, which is an eight-week program of learning how to meditate. And you should come in and hear what he has to say, because it's exactly what you're talking about, meditating and visualizing. Oh, this is perfect. So I went in. It was like about two, three days later, I went in. He did his little presentation. Now, I have to frame this with, this was a time when... Um, all of this mind programming and, and gurus and, and all these, you know, people were being taken off into these, uh, what do they call those? You know, the, um, you know what I'm talking about? God, the word. Is, is that deprogramming? Yeah, it was, this was a time when deprogramming was beginning to happen because pe cults, that's the word. Right, right. People had been going into cults. Transcendental meditation was brand new, but it was kind of in a little bit of an extreme state. So anyway, um, I was guarded. Right, right. And I went in with this image of this, this man um, who was teaching all this stuff that seemed to be what they, the people who were not being Christian or religious were talking about doing. And then there was all these people getting kidnapped so their family could um, deprogram them. Then there was Jamestown. I mean, so it was in the yeah. middle of all of this yeah. that I was being introduced to meditation and metaphysics. So there was yeah. this huge conflict because I've been raised in the Christian church, a Baptist church. My mother was Baptist, my father was um, Methodist, and my grandmother was Seventh-day Adventist. So I was wrapped in church and tradition. So it was difficult for me to, to make this transi transition at first. Mm -hmm. But the meditation and the results I was getting and the life-changing events that started as a result of me connecting with them changed my life and it changed everything. The good news is that Meditation Dynamics program is included in the studies for uh, the university now, but we are also about to release it into book form. Right, right. Where it's available to the public. So everything that I did back then, which prepared me for this journey of, of of uh, ministry and learning, um, everything that got me going is going to be presented and made available to the public in just a few months. So anyone want, that wants to do and be introduced to this wonderful philosophy, I recommend highly. This is where you start because meditation is key to everything. Even with the four agreements that you are using as your foundation, it's also based on meditation. Right. Um, and I kind of marveled at how you're using this book for this uh, show just because I'm going to be doing a webinar for our group on the seven universal laws this weekend, uh -huh. which is what the four agreements is based on. Uh -huh. So my story carries forward from them, from then um, being uh, a graduate, doing coaching. Um, I own my own businesses for seven years as an IT or um, information technology consultant, working uh -huh. for all kinds of companies, Fortune 500 companies and so uh -huh. organizations. Um, and I did that for 33 years until 2002, um, when one day at the wonderful age in my uh, early 50s, I was coming home one day after a particularly difficult, long day. I was doing 18, 20 hour days then. Uh, I got paid well. I was making a lot of money, six mm -hmm. plus, but I was being fried like, you know, like just, just by a, a blowtorch. Uh, and my life inside was crumbling. Even though yeah. I was a metaphysician, I knew all the principles. I was totally unhappy. So yeah. that began a change of me deciding to retire from IT and focus my life on my dream. Oh, very which was good. really into helping people, uh -huh. being more into my energy healing, being uh -huh. more connected spiritually and grounded and practicing and sharing the, the information that had been so generously and lovingly given to me very through good. the university. Yeah, um, so that good. was transition number one. Okay. And Reverend Lynn, let me pause you right there. Okay. Sure. Because what I want to ask you, so you mentioned you graduated from the University of Metaphysics. Can mm -hmm. you let us know? Okay, so there are three programs. You have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a PhD program. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what was your master's degree in with the University of Metaphysics? What, what was your, dis your thesis on? That is still, I'm still working on my thesis. Okay. I did the programs. Uh -huh. I went through them all, and when life was happening at the time, I was, oh, this is one of the things that happened. Okay. First, my first uh, degree, my first bachelor's degree, right. came uh, with a divorce. Okay. Because I had changed, 
and my then husband was going in a very dark direction and I didn't want to go there and we split up. So mm -hmm. along with this newfound life and transition of metaphysics, I had to use everything I had learned to get me through a very difficult divorce. I had two yeah. little kids uh -huh. and this was uh, the beginning of, like a, of, of everything. Like I said, it changed my life. So I um, got the degrees. I started working and taking care of my family. And for many years, I just, I went through the master's program, but I could not make myself commit to the thesis. Oh, so okay. my thesis then, was, the topic was life transition and change. Mm -hmm. um, because of what I had gone through and how my life had changed, and I had become happier and more uh, free and, and dealt with the divorce and come out positive and strong and building a business and a career and all of that. So I knew it worked. And then some other life issues happened. You know, my son got killed. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, uh, thank you. And this is in 1988. So I had to use that. I had learned in yes. meditation and affirmation and prayer and connecting within all of that to survive that. And so that took several years. That mm -hmm. brought on, I had remarried before then, but that trauma brought on some domestic violence and another divorce. Mm. So through all of these life happenings, I was looking at life transition and change, but in the back of my mind, there was this message of, it's not done yet, so how can yeah. you write about it? <laughs> so that, you know, how can you write a thesis on life change and transition, and you're not there yet? So those, those were the reasons I had to postpone and postpone and postpone. And then I got back into the study in the early 2000s because that's when I decided to retire from IT to okay. turn my life away from this successful business and go follow my dream and connect. I wanted to be a teacher, a public speaker. I hired a coach. I had gotten into real estate investing. I had built a $3 million portfolio. I had remarried in 1998 and I was doing great. I was studying with uh, people. I would, my mentors were Mark Victor Hansen and uh, Robert Allen. And I was in their inner circle club, which I paid. 25k to join to be personally mentored with them things were going great yeah and my then husband who was a kind of he let me put it this way he's very much the mindset of a donald trump much gentler much you know kinder and compassionate but he had that if you don't do what i want you to do attitude then uh -huh, uh -huh. you will you know that whole kind of thing which a lot yeah, of women are going through <laughs> Right. Yeah, and so that brought another divorce in 2004. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Followed quickly, and a lot of my property was in Vegas. I lived in Southern California, but a lot of my property and stuff was in Vegas because that's where the money was. Uh -huh. Then came the downturn, then came the economic collapse, and then my then recently ex died. Mm. So... <laughs> In the middle of all of that was going on, I just get you know given up my business, and I was dependent on my my uh, in, my savings, the income from the, the investments and things, and it just didn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. So I found myself floating in the middle of nothing and nowhere because over the next few years, I'm in my middle fifties, fifties, and there are no jobs, and the ones that are available, I wasn't able to get. So for three years, I did what people have talked about: hundreds of resumes two interviews, no job. And I ended up nearly homeless, mm. well, living with friends where I had owned seven or eight houses and always been in my own place. I found myself living with friends. Wow. I, um, over the, the period of years, my family had passed away and the only ones left were my daughter, um, two nieces and a nephew. Mm. So I could not fall back on them. I had nothing and no one except Dr. Masters, these teachings and what I believed and knew was true. I knew my strength came from within. I knew that no matter what my circumstances were, as hard as it was, and believe me, it got really rough. But I knew that if I just kept going, putting one foot in front of the other, yeah. that as long as my heart kept beating, I had a reason to keep working and pushing forward and opening up so I could figure out and learn what's this all about? Who do I need to become to let this experience move past me? When I started asking that question and yeah. saying, I'm willing to make the changes because I knew it had to do with me becoming something new and different, that's when things started to change. Now, that was about the time this group started. 
and about okay. the time I was invited to become its team leader. Um, so we started the group. We ended up over about a year and a half uh, accumulating about 300 or so members. Um, and then things just kind of went into a neutral state. I maintained the group, sustained it, kept it going all these years until two years ago. And then Dr. Masters passed. Yes, yes. And things started changing again. Yeah. And it's been quite the ride ever since. Up until that time, we were a separate organization from the university. Uh, but with his passing and a change in our focus and direction, um, Reverend Michelle, bless mm -hmm. her heart, decided that it was time to bring the group into the university and connect us so that we mm -hmm. could actually serve the student body. And mm -hmm. within the last two years, we've gone from a 300 or so members to over 1,600. Mm -hmm. um, not all are active, because of course some are, you know, doctoral program graduates and they're doing their thing and we're hoping that some of them will come back and share because it's really, really important for those who've been through this process, who know it works, who've received their degrees and that are using them to let the other students know these are valid degrees, they are yes. marketable, they are, are valuable. Um, even with me being in information technology, I was able to use my degree to sustain my career and to carry me through. So it wow. was, yeah, and it was something, it depends on how you use it and your attitude about it. Right. Um, when you believe in something and yeah. yourself, people do too. I mean, we have a great example of all of that coming out of the TV every day. You know, yeah. they say it because they want you to believe it and people buy into it. So your word is powerful and this image that you portray uh, of what we do and, and um, how we are accredited is powerful too. So, you know, I'm so glad that I got into this. And um, as I mentioned early on, my life is taking another transition. It's another major shift that just started. It started last year, but it's now taking off. So when you talk about what I have done or what I'm doing, uh -huh. all I can tell you at this point and to tell your audience is it's not over yet. I can't really say oh, yeah. what I started focusing on back in 2004 when I thought I knew what my goal and my dream was has evolved. Of course. Now, it's something bigger, better, more powerful. I'm mentoring for the university, which was something I never even imagined was possible, but I'm mentoring for the university now. Right. Um, I've become an energy healer. I'm sitting here looking at your beautiful crystal sitting beside you because in the last year, they ventured my life in a huge way. And when I say in a huge way, yeah. oh gosh, I love, is that not what it was? Yes, this is Labrador. And I'm sitting right. here holding mine in, yeah, my, in my hand. Um, right, yes, I love, and you know, I had always yes, been color mainly. Color. That's beautiful. Yeah, I had always mainly been attracted to the blue green Labradorite, uh, which I have lots of specimens of that. And as you see, I'm wearing oh, one. Yeah. But I was at the crystal store, Bay's Rock Shop, this was sometimes last year, and a woman was looking at this golden Labradorite, and I see like a lavender bridge yeah, there is. in yeah, there. I see and for it's me, beautiful. I got this as like a meditation piece to really gaze in, to be able to transcend to the inner dimension. And so I can see that. And yeah. this is the inner flame. See, look, look, see, Reverend Lynn, this is like the inner flame. <laughs> See, if I would buy, if I'd see something like that, I'd buy it in a heartbeat too. Mine doesn't have, this is my first Labradorite. It's my palm stone. And I've, I, I have stones sitting in front of my computers, you know, um, uh -huh. to help maintain that balance. And it's one of them because whenever I find myself stressing um, over any number of things and my e-commerce business is going inside out right now, I find myself picking up this stone and holding on to it. It's been my touchstone now for the last six or seven months as things have started transitioning again. So I'm grateful for it. And uh, uh -huh. I'm looking for a bigger one. I'm, I'm actually looking for some bigger stones to put in my home. But anyway, I'm sitting here <laughs> nice to gaze at yours while I'm doing um, this with you. So the whole point is um, I've become certified as an energy healer. I am a Reiki master. Um, I'm starting to teach a little bit about crystals because even though I just started studying them last year, what I found is like now I have over 60 different ones uh -huh. um, and I'm using, I'm creating grids, I'm doing all kinds of other things and they are definitely working. 
I'm understanding more about how they work and why they work with our body and how important they are to us. Uh, most people don't realize we're crystals. I mean, yes. uh, duh. Yes. So if you work with the energy of the earth, which is what this does, it makes it so much easier to heal and clear our bodies on every level, not just on the physical side, which unfortunately is what most people try to do. So anyway, um, I mean, that's kind of my story. It's a wonderful thing to, to have your eyes opened and be educated at the same time. And that's what the University of Metaphysics or University of Sedona, which is its most popular name, um, that's what it does for us. It really, yeah. you know, we gain all this wisdom and insight knowledge and then it opens you up to the University of Spirit, which is yeah. something you can't buy or get except by going within. Right. And, you know, since you've mentioned that you knew Dr. Masters personally, would you care to share some insights about him? You know, he's the founder of the school. And from what I recall, isn't he the original person who began to offer metaphysical um, ordination to people? to help them be able to do their spin, uh, spiritual ministry and spiritual journey. The first, one of the first people, if not the first person to offer ordination, I believe, correspondence courses. I believe he was, because like I said, the university is over 50 years old. Um, and yeah, over, I remember back when he was doing all of this study, um, I was in one of those first few classes. That's one of the reasons he was teaching live. I think my class had maybe 15 people in it, maybe 20. We were sitting, you know, in the sanctuary church there where he would teach from. And I mean, there are many chairs left over. I mean, one, two, three, four people in a row. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I, it out. Um, I just remember that it was such a warm, inviting, and comfortable feeling to be in his presence. Um, you know, when you see pictures of him, he's very dignified and very classic in his appearance. That's his he had favorite. a beautiful voice. Yeah, and and beautiful you know, voice. and and he's you know, he's six over six feet tall and everything. Very handsome man, um, very conservative and very um, generous of spirit, uh -huh. uh, soft spoken and compassionate. Um, you would never know that he had this wild, crazy sense of humor. He kind of was a prankster in a way. Um, he would laugh, and when he would laugh, his, lo his voice was booming and just really out there. Um, but he was the kind of person that if it wasn't something where you could laugh and have fun and enjoy it, he wasn't going to do it. And he didn't want to be around it. He appreciated beautiful things in life. He appreciated people. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't easy to get to know because... Um, one of the things that he learned early on, it's taken me a long time to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has, um, is that all that's metaphysical is not gold. And by that, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people that are drawn to the metaphysical philosophies and teachings because it emanates so much light and it really is attractive to all spirits and beings of all levels. And that's because it's truth. But because of that, and because it's so attractive, you get some people who come into this philosophy, they learn it, they speak the language, they talk, you know, talk it, but they don't walk it. Right. So it's very easy to allow people to get close to you because you are trusting and open and vulnerable, all the things we want to be. Mm -hmm. But there is an element of discernment. That yes. Here. He was a master of that discernment. And that's yes. what he had learned how to love and be compassionate and, and yes. understanding with everyone and all their stuff. Yes. But he maintained that white and light protection and, and uh, I guess you could say space that mm -hmm. I didn't realize how powerful that vision or that um, lesson he taught us to do. I didn't realize how powerful it was until I had some experiences with some people yeah. over time that taught me, keep yourself protected by the truth, by the light, by yes. the love that is spiritually radiating through you because nothing else is going to protect you from some of the things that will come to you disguised as love and light. Right. And, and, so and to be ready. So 
And, yeah. so, and when it does come, instead of going into fear and letting it overwhelm you, you pull out your little tools and your crystals or whatever your medium uh, may be and cleanse and clear. And you can mm -hmm. do it in a way that is not only healing to you, but to the person that you are working with so that you don't continue or don't contribute to that negativity that they may be carrying because you don't want to do that. And you certainly don't want to connect and make that permanent connection to that. You right. Bless it, release it, and you, you know, disconnect it as soon as possible. Because right. it's interesting what, you know, the dynamics of people in uh, metaphysics. But at the same time, it has saved my life and I wouldn't give it up or change it for the world. It, it, this is the most marvelous um, learning and teaching you could ever practice. Right. And, 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 and not only is it learning and teaching, it really is a lifestyle. It yes. Really is, as you know, it took me, I actually started with the program two years ago. Uh, I think like either right before or shortly after Dr. Masters passed. And, and the reason, and you know, when I started, I didn't realize that maybe about six or seven years earlier, I had some email correspondences and I was supposed to start, but I think you know how sometimes mm -hmm, life mm -hmm, happens mm -hmm. and I completely forgot about it. But, um, you know, one of the, one of the two things I want to touch on, one of the things is I was very happy as I began my studies to realize that Dr. Master's foundation was meditation. It was about yes. getting to know yourself, getting to connecting with that uh, inner divine spark of divinity that we're all connected with. And then the second thing is you mentioned discernment. You know, you're not the only one. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> the heart and the sleeve and just allow everything in. And, yeah. you know, the end of last year, I said my words for 2018, one of them, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head, but the first one was discernment. Mm -hmm. To understand that there's a difference between judging and judgment and being in discernment. Because mm -hmm. I would confuse the two. Yes. So when that intuitive voice would kind of whisper at me, I would immediately slap it back and say, don't be so judgmental. <laughs> and then, of course, every time, that intuition was spot on and I got burned and, you know, uh -huh. I couldn't blame the other person because I knew better, but I just refused to listen. And so finally at 47 years old or years young or however you want to put it, I'm finally starting to understand discernment, discernment. <laughs> and isn't you are beautiful. 47. Wow. I'm old enough to be your mom. <laughs> and you are gorgeous. My daughter, she's, so right, she's just a year or two, a couple of years younger than you are. And you know, she's my baby. She's <laughs> Uh, and speaking of beautiful women, when I'm looking at you in your dignified sageness, you know who I see? Who? Our Reverend Sister Della Reed. Uh, are you kidding? Well, you know, um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, I can see that. And you know who I've often, in fact, when she first started back in the 80s, People, right, because she graduated from University of Massachusetts, right? She was one right? of our, our doctors, one of our very high esteemed doctors, and we recognized her and celebrated her when she passed not too long ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I've often, when I, was, when I was younger, and she was younger, people used to come up to me and call me Oprah. People used to mistake me for her. I had people come up and ask me for their autograph. Now, that was back. Both of us had similar hairstyles. Okay. We were both a lot younger. Of course, she's fared a lot better with all that money she better had. She didn't go through what I went through, um, which definitely has aged me. I can see it in my pictures. It, the picture I use on Facebook is only about maybe seven or eight years old. And I look at it and go, oh God, life was a little rough on the body, but that's okay. The girl's still in great shape. I don't have yeah, medical issues. Gorgeous. And my energy is good. So looking at some of the other people around me, is like, I have no complaints. Life happens. <laughs> this body is strong. She's been great. She has supported me and cared for me and, and, and given me wonderful experiences. So I have no complaints. If she yes. gives me some stuff, that was because she's a tough old broad and I, you know, she's <laughs> credit. But um, it's the meditation dynamics. Let me go back to that. Um, the meditation dynamics program. When I first started with Dr. Masters, it was a prerequisite. Yes. And when he went online, which I understood why, he just included it in the home study and through the study guide, advised that you start with it. But I know students are so eager to get into the meat of the studies and they want that degree and they want to, you know, it's, it's self-paced, so you want to rush through it. 
Um, but it really is a mistake. So when we started doing the webinars last year, which we're celebrating our one year anniversary on the 22nd, about a week mm -hmm. from now, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, but when we started doing this, we started with the meditation dynamics program because we knew that that was the the foundation the basis of any and everything you were ever going to do and certainly of your growth and experiencing of the studies so we used the first those first two classes to try to help people um get into it and mm -hmm. then hopefully follow through on their own but i went through the whole eight weeks of it because we had to that was when after we graduated from that not were regularly meditating and had that discipline in in our lives, then Dr. Masters offered her, us the chance to enroll in the university mm -hmm. and get your bachelor's degree and your ministerial license and master's and doctorate. So I jumped right in. And what I found though, once I got in and I went through, I finished my degree, I think it was about maybe six months and got my bachelor's degree and ministerial license. But then the life that was transforming inside, start showing up outside in my life. Mm -hmm. And I had these little kids, and like I said, I went through divorce and all this. Uh, the studies, and even though I was well on my way to taking those exams, just got put aside. But now I feel like I'm a master at so much of everything. Uh, the thesis is back on schedule. Uh -huh. I will be finished this year. Um, and then um, part of that is we will be going through the master's degree program later this year. Okay. So I'll be covering that with everyone, which also gives me what I need to really get into my my master master's thesis. My biggest challenge right now is I really am not sure what it's supposed to be mm -hmm. because the life in transition, as I we were talking off the video, <laughs> it's happening again. It's like right. oh, yeah. yeah. So you got to get a different one. Yeah, put that slingshot down, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm tired of flying through space. So I think I posted in the group the other day, um, something has happened, something has shifted in just the last few weeks. Hmm. Certainly in the last seven to maybe 10 days, there's been a major shift. Um, I'm old enough and experienced enough in life now to recognize it when it starts. So instead of going into fear, insecurity, and resistance, which makes it painful and difficult, I started meditating and praying using the tools that I know I need to just dispel that fear and resistance so I can say, okay, what do I need to do? I don't want to suffer through this one. I want to fly through this one. I want to embrace what it's bringing because my experience has taught me it's wonderful. and by taking that attitude, it's not like I'm not a little uncertain and scared, because I am. Um, I'm still not confident in some of the things that I'm being challenged to do. But the lady Isis, as most people know her as Isis, showed up about 10 days ago, and I told you how that happened. I've been posting about it. And she is an ascended guide, and most people know her as an Egyptian goddess who was walking. Mm -hmm here on earth she's All a set. powerful yeah. beautiful high priestess the goddess of change transformation compassion love and creativity i mean she and she's in i've also been told by some she's also no nonsense so get your act together she okay. is not gonna play so okay. i'm finding that to be true but it's exciting but see i had just settled into this i just want to coast for a minute you know <laughs> Yeah. I've, been age. I've been through a lot. I'm working with the group. I'm loving the energy and sharing and being able to share what I've experienced. I was not wanting to go do something dynamic, wild, creative, and new. I really just didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, here it's happening. There you go. There you go. And I'm sitting here looking at you, reminding me of how she looks in her cards and pictures. Just let me show. Look at this. Beautiful. Yeah. This that card is, nice. is called the Portal of Light. Oh. And it says she glides on wings through time and space. This card is her invitation reaching out to me to follow her into the Portal of Light, where she's bringing back several of the cards, because I've been keeping a diary, uh, several of the cards keep repeating this pattern of another one here, past life present power. Uh -huh. You're restoring some present, some past life powers and abilities that I have not had coming into my present life. And that's the energy healing and the psychic tarot stuff and 
all of this, which is now blossoming in ways. I have clients that I haven't talked to in months that are starting to make appointments. I'm getting people asking me about it on Facebook. So I know it's the right way to go. Yeah. And to all of you out there, when, you, when, when life taps you on the shoulder, and I, I'm going to finish with this little story. I posted it on the group today. Mm -hmm. Many people have never heard of this young man. Well, he's really not that young. He's 39, I think. His name is Andre Ingham. Okay. He is a young, uh, he's a man. He's got a wife and two kids. Mm -hmm. And he's been playing in the, the minors for the Lakers basketball team for 10 years. Wow. 10 years playing the minors, just hoping one day he'd get his chance to play in the, the majors. That chance came about five or six days ago. Yeah. They called him up to play in the major leagues. Yes. Which is like huge promotion and raise. Right. right. He got on the, on the court and burn it up, blew it up. He made five three point shots. <laughs> he made true. several normal shots, a total of 19 points in his first game out there with the Lakers. Wow. Now he's this superstar because he's, they're talking about rookie of the year. They're talking about how he waited patiently and kept working on his dream for 10 years. He took a year off of pursuing his dream to give his wife a chance to pursue her career oh. and get her degree and took care of his kids. And everybody was saying, you know, you might lose it if you step out. He did all that and stepped back in. And now mm -hmm. look how he's being blessed and rewarded. Now he's got fame. Everybody's talking about him. He's got money and his family. They they are just, just basking in the glow of persistence, determination, faith, courage, and the willingness to hold your dream even when it may not seem like it's going to happen. It can happen and it'll happen until your heart stops or until you give up. Nothing else matters. Wow. That was amazing. And I was going to ask you for some wonderful final words. And that was well, that's it. And look, up, look him up on the internet. He's everywhere. But he's, you know, he's a wonderful man to treat his family so well. He recognizes the value of his wife. She stood with him and now their dreams coming true. And it's just, you can see the radiance of him finally experiencing his dream. And he didn't get scared and go into, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Is that, am I going to be good enough? Is this going to work? What he went out there and just dropped in the zone and shot <laughs> three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer. Did not stop him. That's the power of when you are in the place of spirit and you don't resist what- Yeah, in the zone. You drop, that's what the zone is. Yeah, yeah. That's so drop in your zone. Just step into the power that you are born with. Don't let anybody tell you different. Don't listen to the naysayers. They don't see your vision. They don't understand the details. They certainly don't have your passion. Sometimes it means you may leave some people behind, but they will catch up later on. And yeah. if they don't, it means that they were just part of your process. But don't let anything keep you from your goal um, and never give up your dream. And if you have, make up some new ones. <laughs> That is easy. Make up some new ones. That is very true. So, and you have a website. You're going to send me your website. I'm going to put it in the description box below. But while we're talking, just go ahead and say what your website is, just so we have it on video. Oh, okay. Uh, the website is called the woman exec, woman exec at, uh, dot com. T H E W O M A N E X E C. That is going to be changing soon, but don't worry. It'll, you'll be, um, moved to the new one. That was the website that I created back in 2010 when all of this stuff started coming together again for me in this new life that I have. Um, so it, it's an older site, but it's still very beautiful. It shows, and I love it because it shows a lot of darkness, which back then I was coming out of the darkness. There's a beautiful yellow um, sunflower okay that shines out of the darkness that's overseeing everything and believe me that was symbolic for me then and it is now i just know i need to update it but if you you know when you look at the site if you can imagine sunflowers follow the sun yes they do they tend to they fold do. during the darkness but they follow the sun yeah. follow the sun in your life don't let the darkness get you distracted it takes your energy away follow the sun and rem remember you're a diamond in the making you're a sunflower standing in the brightness mm -hmm. of the light and, and always remember that. Right. And remember that sun is within you. Mm -hmm. And when you are not distracted by external, you know, naysayers and this and that and this and that, and really follow your heart, 
which is where that sun is. And also we have uh, universityofmetaphysics.com and universityofsedona.com. And my point of having this conversation with Reverend Liz, uh, Reverend Lynn today was to discuss her beautiful, amazing self and also segue into the university, which is how I met her. And, um, you know, I just think it's a, an amazing program that it's very affordable. Uh, there is a payment plan. Uh, it is, you go at your own pace. There are beautiful people out there that are ready and willing to assist you. Uh, we have a wonderful community on Facebook where you can, you know, communicate and, and meet some people that you can relate with that can help you. And just wanted to bring that honor to Dr. Masters, you know, for all of the wonderfulness that he studied in his life and has passed forward to us, uh, which are viable tools and which the main thing is to get to know ourselves. And he really gives us step-by-steps on meditation and on affirmations and confirmations and all of that good stuff. So Reverend Lynn, I thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be here today with us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. And it's so, you know, anytime I can get a chance to talk about the university and Dr. Masters, I will. I just want to mention to the, uh, those who watch, um, he's got two books on Amazon.com. If you go search on Dr. Paul Leon Masters, uh -huh. bring up his two books. One is The Spiritual um, Mind Treatments. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Yeah, Spiritual have... Mind Power Affirmations. This is one. And uh -huh. then got one out there called, I believe it's The Mystical Insights. Anyway, if you just check, uh, just do a search on Polyon Masters um, on Amazon, it will bring up this book. It'll bring up the others. And of course, we are, you know, on the internet. We are on Pinterest. We are on um Twitter. So yeah, this is the mystical insights. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, that one, it is beautiful. There, and then there's this one. Yes, I is, have that one. Yeah, but I have so many books over here. <laughs> Think about yeah. where it is. It would take Meditation it. Dynamics is coming yeah. out in the next month or two. I know she said, uh, Michelle said it's very close to being ready for release. Yeah. And there are others, but by all means, go mm -hmm. to the website, University of Metaphysics or University of Sedona, whichever you can remember, um, and browse the website. There's so much more information about him and the information that's free available mm -hmm. there, including information about enrolling and our scholarships. We do have scholarships. Yes. So there's many ways for you to become, um, who you know who you're intended to be to create the life you want and it's no secret this like uh, Tamu said this is a lifestyle it will transform your life for the better it will bring you so much more happiness um, it doesn't guarantee that life won't bring challenges that's not the point of life life is supposed to be challenging yeah. so we learn what you need to work through it so right and the youtube channel if you go on youtube and search either dr master's name or university of metaphysics there are a plethora of wonderful teaching videos of right yes i forgot about youtube and that way you can kind of get a chance to experience his energy, his presence, because there's a lot of recordings of him. And the good news is there's still so much more stuff in the archives and the library that they haven't prepared to present yet. Mm -hmm. We will be presenting new information and, and more, um, making more uh, studies available uh, as the years go by. It's our intention to build this, this university stronger and bigger than ever before. And we, uh, Dr. Masters left a 20 year plan that we are working. So for most of us, that'll take us way out into the future and beyond <laughs> that, we'll let spirit decide what that'll be. But One you, step at a time. That we are stronger, better, and, and more determined than ever to make this light shine brighter, to bring his legacy to the public and to bring in more people who are hungry for this material. And yeah. thank you for letting that be possible through you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to take a moment to thank everyone, Reverend Lynn, and thank everyone who has joined us today. Please remember to like this video, share this video, click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of uh, new interviews coming up. And if you can hang on once we're done, uh, Reverend Lynn. Okay, so I'd like to go ahead and let's take a nice deep centering breath. 
take a moment to remember our ancestors and all those who have transitioned before us. So I wish you peace and great bliss. Thank you. Crystal blessings, everyone. <laughs>